Blue Origin has completed another flight of its new Shepard rocket. This time, six paying passengers rode for 10 minutes to an altitude of about 100 kilometers, which is roughly the edge of space. In the same week, SpaceX launched four rockets, all reaching orbit successfully. Each used a booster that had already flown before. We are no longer comparing rockets. We are comparing two very different realities. By the end of 2025, the difference between Blue Origin and SpaceX isn't just wide, it's structural, meaning it's built into how each company operates. It's measurable and difficult to dismiss with excuses. In this episode of TechMap, we'll look at the numbers, the timelines, and the plain truth about where Blue Origin really stands. You may have seen the news. Tori Bruno, who stepped down from ULA just four days ago, has joined Blue Origin. He'll serve as president of the company's newly created National Security Group. His job is clear to strengthen Blue Origin's position in classified defense launches, where his long experience with the DoD gives him a strong advantage. But does this move mean Blue Origin will finally close the gap with SpaceX? My honest answer is no. And here's why. Let's go back 10 years. November 2015. Blue Origin made headlines when its new Shepard rocket completed a suborbital flight and landed upright afterward. The landing was vertical and controlled. The hardware was reused. Jeff Bezos, the company's founder, shared the success publicly, and the entire space industry took notice. Just one month later, SpaceX achieved something similar, though more complex. Its Falcon 9 rocket launched satellites to orbit and then landed its first stage safely back on Earth. Although the missions were different, both demonstrated a key concept. A rocket can land itself and be reused. At that time, many observers, including Bezos himself, believed the two companies were close in capability. Both had proved reusability worked. Both were led by billionaires. Both spoke about building a future where millions of people live and work in space. And both placed their bets on making rockets reusable. Their beginnings were also similar. Blue Origin was founded in 2000. SpaceX followed in 2002. Blue Origin even had a two-year head start. So what changed between 2015 and today? The answer lies in strategy. After proving rocket landings were possible, SpaceX made a clear choice prioritize orbital flight cadence. Their goal was to fly often, learn fast, and keep improving. They launched frequently, even if that meant failing in public view. When rockets crashed or engines shut down, each incident became a lesson that improved the next design. Between 2016 and 2018, SpaceX flew the Falcon 987 times. By 2017, the company averaged about one and a half launches per month. In 2018, it introduced the Falcon 9 Block 5 version, built specifically for rapid reuse. By 2020, boosters were flying five or six times each. Reuse had become routine, and the industry was watching. Blue Origin chose a different path. It kept testing New Shepard, refining it carefully for tourism flights. The company also began work on New Glenn, a much larger rocket meant for orbital missions. But Blue Origin hadn't launched until 2025. It didn't make its mistakes in public, and its pace stayed cautious. Ten years later, here's where those choices led. Let's start with SpaceX. Now let's look at the data. Measurable facts rather than opinions. SpaceX launched 96 orbital missions in 2023, nearly all using the Falcon 9. Most were successful. In 2024, the company broke its own record with more than 100 orbital launches in one year, something no other company or nation had ever achieved. By December 2025, SpaceX had exceeded 150 launches for the year, maintaining an average of more than two launches each week. The success rate stayed above 98%. Booster reuse has become completely normal. Several Falcon 9 first stages have flown more than 20 times each. One booster even completed its 25th flight in 2025. Rocket fairings are also recovered and reused regularly. 
the time between one landing and the next flight dropped to less than two months in several cases. The estimated internal cost per Falcon 9 launch is now below $30 million. Because SpaceX builds rockets quickly, it can afford to lose a booster occasionally without slowing down. The company produces engines and rocket stages faster than any other launch provider in the world. Now let's look at Blue Origin. Blue Origin's New Shepard has flown more than 20 times since its first human flight in 2021. Every mission has followed the same basic path. The rocket launches vertically, crosses the Kármán line, and then returns to land 10 minutes later. Passengers experience a few minutes of weightlessness. These flights are short, predictable, and focused on tourism. The rocket's design and performance have not changed much over time. Meanwhile, New Glenn has attempted two flights by 2025. The first launch had technical problems, including the booster failing to land as planned. The second flight performed successfully. As of now, though, Blue Origin has delivered no commercial payloads into orbit. The comparison is stark. While SpaceX completed around 150 successful orbital missions during the same period, Blue Origin attempted only two. SpaceX's launches carry satellites, supplies, and crews that generate steady income. Blue Origin is still preparing for its first operational orbital mission. Some argue that comparing Blue Origin with SpaceX is unfair, suggesting that they have different goals or starting points, but a closer look shows that the comparison holds. Both companies were founded by wealthy entrepreneurs. Both aimed from the start to build reusable rockets. Both landed boosters successfully in 2015. Both shared a vision of expanding human activity into space and of building a commercial space economy. So the comparison is not only fair, but also instructive. On paper, New Glenn and Falcon 9 look similar. Each is a two-stage, partially reusable rocket. Both rockets use vertical landings for their first stages. Both steer during descent using grid fins. Both land on drone ships rather than returning directly to the launch site. The new Glenn rocket uses seven BE-4 engines in its first stage. Each BE-4 engine produces about 2,400 kilonewtons of thrust, or roughly 540,000 pounds of force, at sea level. These engines burn liquid oxygen and liquid methane, a cleaner fuel combination than older rockets that used kerosene. This puts New Glenn in the same general performance range as Falcon 9. But technical potential is not the same as proven reliability. The Merlin engines that power Falcon 9 have accumulated millions of seconds of flight time over hundreds of missions. The BE-4 engines, by contrast, have very limited flight experience. Some critics claim Blue Origin is copying SpaceX's design ideas. In truth, Using a proven design is often smart engineering, not imitation. The issue is timing. SpaceX began testing reusable rockets publicly around 2013, learning from multiple failures before achieving success in 2017. Blue Origin did not begin orbital testing with New Glenn until the mid-2020s, by which time SpaceX had already landed hundreds of boosters and treated reuse as normal practice. The BE-4 engine's long development cycle, almost a decade, further slowed progress. These delays affected not only Blue Origin, but also ULA, which uses BE-4 engines for its Vulcan rocket. During the same period, SpaceX advanced from the Merlin engine to the Raptor, which uses a more complex system called full-flow staged combustion. This design improves efficiency and allows higher performance. SpaceX now builds several Raptor engines every week, regularly testing and upgrading them without halting production. To give credit where it's due, Blue Origin does have real strengths. The BE-4 engine uses an oxygen-rich combustion cycle, which is technologically advanced. The new Glenn rocket's large payload fairing can fit bigger spacecraft than the Falcon 9 can carry. Its new Shepard flights have maintained a perfect safety record for passengers and Jeff Bezos' financial resources mean the company will not run out of funding. These are significant advantages. But advantages without operational results are incomplete. An advanced engine that rarely flies is just expensive equipment. 
a larger fairing that has never reached orbit is unused capacity. A perfect record on short suborbital flights does not translate into experience with orbital systems, and funding without fast execution does not lead to progress. Blue Origin now has what SpaceX lacked 15 years ago – advanced engines, strong finances, and government partnerships. What it does not have is flight rate, the number of successful launches over time. In spaceflight, flight rate is everything. It reveals design flaws quickly, drives manufacturing improvements, builds experience within teams, reduces costs through repetition, attracts customers, and generates revenue. SpaceX learned these lessons by launching frequently, analyzing failures, and applying corrections immediately. Blue Origin's slower pace means it learns those lessons more gradually and the performance gap grows wider each year. Could Blue Origin turn things around? Technically, yes. They have the money, the people, and the technology to do it. A strong new Glenn launch campaign could shift the story fast, but only if the company moves with real urgency. Right now, one of the biggest slowdowns is in production. Blue Origin has been building New Glenn's second stages faster than its first stages, known as GS-1 boosters. Their factory in Huntsville, Alabama took years to fully ramp up, and it's still catching up to an efficient pace. Some of this is by design. Blue Origin only plans to make a few GS-1 boosters, each one far more complex and expensive than a Falcon 9 first stage. The strategy counts on landing and reusing those same boosters quickly after every flight. But that's a risky bet. If a single landing fails, the whole launch schedule could get delayed. SpaceX handled this differently. During Falcon 9 and Starship development, they built hardware in bulk and kept multiple boosters in production at the same time. That way, one failed landing wouldn't hold up progress. Blue Origin once hoped to launch New Glenn eight times a year but so far, it looks like the year will close out with just two missions. Then there's the upper stage, the GS-2, which adds another challenge. The current version is expensive, driving up the total cost per flight. Jeff Bezos has talked about two possible fixes. One is to make the upper stage reusable, and the other is to manufacture it so cheaply that throwing it away each time doesn't matter. As Bezos himself said, this isn't a decision you can make on paper. Blue Origin will need to build, test, and compare both paths before choosing which one works best.